Hey guys, it's Professor Latimer here. I'm excited to be back for cycle two. So today I'm gonna to bring you cycle two, week one science experiment. So I hope you guys had an awesome summer, awesome break. Our spring and summer has been kind of crazy. We've moved states and moved CC campuses and I'm gonna have a baby in December, so exciting. So, but it's been good. God's been good through all of it. So I hope you've had an awesome summer too. So we're outside today for ex the first week's experiment. And today is uh, from our Van Cleves guide, our Van Cleves book. And we're gonna do number two, which is shaded. So we're kind of in the shade right now. And number 17, which is same place. So I recommend starting with shaded. You'll set that up first and get that going while you do the second experiment. And you'll come back and look at the results. So I love having um, Nicole Liam's handouts, her her scripts for science. She, you know, if you ever, if you are preparing for science as a tutor or just at home as a class, it can if it feels overwhelming, just remember science is a lot about asking questions and being curious, and that's what we're doing with our students as we homeschool, as we're teaching CC. It's just be curious, and we want them to have that curious spirit and just be able to ask a lot of questions. So if you ever get stuck, just start asking questions. Just keep asking questions. So I love her. She has some really good ideas for some questions to ask. And so we're talking about um, how light and shade affects temperatures on a planet on Earth. You can talk about the moon as well. You know, the earth has a side that we see facing the sun and a side that's in the shade. And is there a temperature difference and why? So some questions you might ask is what is shade? And why is it darker? So just see what ideas they come up with and we'll explain a little bit in the results. And for this experiment, you'll need two thermometers. I don't have two thermometers with me, but you'll just have two thermometers and you will that's what you're gonna use for this experiment. So one of those, you're gonna go outside for this experiment. If you have bad weather, if it's rainy, you can save this week's experiment for week two and do week twos instead first. Um, but take them outside and just make note, and make sure they're the same temperature. Then you're gonna set one in the shade and one in the direct sunlight. And you wanna make sure that they're on the same type of surface. Like if you have grass, put them both on grass in the shade and in the sun. If you're on like a sidewalk, just make sure they're the same surface and you don't have like one on grass and one on the pavement because you'll get different results then. Um, so you can ask them what is a thermometer? How does a thermometer work? And Nicole Liam has some good information too and a diagram of how it works. So we get, the sun puts up a lot of energy and heat and that reaches the earth. Now our atmosphere protects us from a lot of it, but a lot of it does reach the earth. And so the the heat, when it touches something, it, you know, we learned a little bit about that in previous cycles that when there's energy added to something, the molecules vibrate more and they need more space. So that's what happens to a thermometer. When a thermometer gets hotter, the, the liquid inside the thermometer, those molecules are vibrating more and they need more space, so they go up the tube. And then there is measurements, there's numbers on the side of the thermometer to let you know what the temperature is. So that's pretty cool. So that's kind of how a thermometer works. Depending on the age of your students, um, you can share more or less of that. So go ahead and set out your thermometers, one in the shade and one in the sun. Um, the Van Cleef's guide says to leave it for about 20 minutes it may not take that long to see a difference, um, but you will see a difference, which is pretty cool. So in the meantime, you can go to um, experiment number 17, which is on page 10 in your Van Cleef's guide. So you can have the students take turns with this one. Um, I've seen this done different ways. They say in the Van Cleef's, it says, you know, find a tree or something stationary and have two students uh, rotate around it. Um, I've also seen it with three students. So we're gonna demonstrate that today. And for that, you'll need a string or a rope. Um, 
Bankley says about three yards long. That's pretty long. It depends on the space that you have. And, but we're going to demonstrate. So we're going to have one student be the sun and stand still in the middle. And then we're going to have one student be the earth and one student be the satellite. So we're going to go and demonstrate that right now. Okay. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna move down this way a little bit because we bothered one of the neighbor dogs. Okay, so as you hopefully saw from that demonstration, the person who was the satellite on the outside had to go a lot faster to keep up with me, which is the Earth. So what we're learning about in this experiment is how fast satellites have to go in um, to orbit the Earth. So you can ask a lot of good questions um, before this experiment like, okay, what is a satellite? What, why do satellites have to be in orbit? How do they stay in orbit? And what do they use satellites for? And Napoleon gives some really good information about, you know, we use satellites for our TV radio, our weather, our navigation, telephone uh, signals, and taking pictures. So there are some satellites if you looked up into, into the sky at night, that would stay in one, one spot. It looked like they never moved. So in reality though, they are moving really fast. And so with our experiment, we're, we're kind of getting a visual of what, what that would look like in space. Um, and so if you notice, my daughter had to walk a lot faster than me to stay um, in the same spot um, in regards to me. So a satellite in orbit around the Earth has to go a lot faster than the Earth spins in order for it to orbit the Earth in 24 hours and stay in that, look like it's staying in that one location. So it's really cool that the satellites aren't actually just staying still, they're actually moving really fast and moving a lot faster than the Earth. Um, just so they can stay and look at one constant spot on the Earth. So a satellite that stays, that looks like it stays in that one spot, um, it's called a geostationary satellite. And Nicole has some more detailed information, but basically we're just trying to get the students to understand that a satellite in orbit, in geostationary orbit, has to travel faster, has to spin faster than the Earth itself. So there's other questions you could ask too. Um, you know, I think last cycle we did experiment like how our seasons are formed. And so we learned that the earth spins and it orbits around the sun, but satellites also orbit around the earth. So it's interesting to think about how fast do they have to spin um, in order to do their jobs. So when you finish that experiment, uh, you'll come back and they're playing with the rope. You'll come back to your thermometers and you'll take a look at, okay, what's the difference? And you'll just make note of it. And you'll ask questions about why, why did that happen? Why is the one in the sun um, a higher temperature than the one in the shade? And we talked about that a little bit, just the heat and the light energy um, makes these a lot warmer. So when it's in the shade, there's actually either a structure or a tree like leaves that are blocking some of that energy from reaching the ground so it's cooler and we actually learned last cycle too that there are animals who who like in the desert live in the shade and burrow underground to stay cooler so it's just another way we can understand our creation and the way that god created the universe i'm excited for this cycle we're gonna learn about astronomy and so it's just one more way we can learn more about god's creation so 
Hope you guys have a great first week of CC and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.